Hello everyone, this is Kirk, and I'm back with another KSP video. This is Jeb, he's floating out in space. He's pretty excited, and uh, I'll show you guys exactly why he's excited. He uh, just so happens to be right next to his very next command. It's a fairly large ship, so I'll go ahead and give you guys a tour. Um, I can uh, get Jeb to cooperate here. Now, as of the next, uh, the most recent patch, it's actually possible for. Uh, I mean, it's always been possible, but not as possible for uh, for you to run out of uh, jetpack fuel. So uh, I uh, hope I don't run into that right now. But let's go ahead and have a look here. This is the Voyager. It is a uh, variant of the uh, Voyager that I showcased in my previous KSP video, uh, where uh, we uh, took a modular vessel to um, Hilo. As for its name, Voyager is destined for the green giant of Jewel. So I'll uh, show you guys what I've got going on here. Um, as you can tell, it's, it's actually quite a lot. I built this uh, over the course of, I don't know, I, start, I think I started building it in December. I haven't really had time for it, so building it and fueling it up took quite a while. Uh, but let's uh, let's have a look and see what uh, what's going on. So we've got two landers. We've got one large lander, which is the, the one that you see in the center here. Um, it is... I'm hoping that it's what I'm going to be using to land on Tylo and Lave. The smaller lander will be using for uh, for the smaller moons of uh, Jewel. I'm uh, fairly confident it's it's good enough to take off a of Val. We'll uh, we'll have to see if, about that. If not, we'll uh, we should be able to mount a rescue with the. Uh, with the large lander. Uh, there is also a space plane. Um, which I'm hoping to be able to show you guys. I think it's over on the side. Um, these smaller things here are actually probes. We've got six uh, automated probes that we'll be using to We'll, we'll be putting them into orbit around uh, each of the bodies. They have uh, their ion probes that are xenon powered. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be able to deploy those. Now, the space plane is something I built before Rapier engines came out, so uh, it's uh, it's not an SSTO, although I'm confident I, I would probably be able to, to build one that's uh, that's good for late but uh, I've been playing a lot of War Thunder recently so uh, I thought I'd make one of these uh, sort of uh, classic looking uh, planes um, the power source are these uh, RTGs here that are kind of arranged in the so it kind of looks like a propeller and uh, a sole carbonaut will be able to sit in this seat here and uh, hopefully descend. Uh, it will be... It doesn't have any kind of rocket engines, so we'll be using this drive stage here uh, for the uh, deorbit burn on that uh, space plane. Now, if I can fit through here, which I hope I can, if I don't, then uh, I'm kind of screwed. There's another item that I would like to show you guys before we uh, go ahead and actually go back into uh, into the cockpit, as it were. Oh, uh, what do you know? Do fit. There is also a rover. We. Uh, we will be landing this rover on lathe. Um, it will be attached 
to the top of the small lander, which is sitting here. Up at the top, there is a docking adapter that will pick up with the lander, and it, it looks like one of these uh, docking uh, adapters here. Uh, we'll pick it up with the lander and then dock the lander to the uh, to the rover, and then I've got a uh, pretty cool uh, deployment sequence figured out, which I hope is going to work. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty large vessel. Uh, there are, let's see, 9, 11, 13 full tanks of fuel. Um, I haven't measured it, but I, I'm guessing it's somewhere between uh, 50 or 60 and 80 meters long, something like that. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Uh, before this n newest patch came, it was actually really, really laggy. I, I would not have been able to record this, I don't think. Uh, there's also a lab here that I've kind of tacked on top when, uh, when those came out. And I figured it might be useful. I'm not sure whether it will be, but uh, we'll see. Either way, I'm, I'm thinking of leaving the Voyager out there as a... Uh, as a permanent uh, outpost. Um, here you can uh, you can see the, uh, the docking adapter I mentioned. So I'm going to go ahead and take Jeb back into the uh, to the cockpit, and uh, I will uh, see you guys on the map view, and hopefully uh, I'll be able to show you a little bit about the stats on this thing. The way we're we're powered by two uh, four-engined um, drive stages, uh, four nuclear engines. Uh, you might think that's a lot of engines, but this is a really really heavy ship. I've, I've tested uh, I've tested out the burn uh, that uh, we're going to have to do to uh, to get out there, and it turns out it's about an hour long burn. So. Uh, it's uh, it's gonna be a doozy, but don't worry. I'll I'll try to keep these the episodes on this series uh, quite a bit shorter than, uh, than the ones on my previous one. So uh, hopefully, oh, there's also a habitat uh, that I've got down there uh, where everybody else is kind of living, except for the people in the lab who are actually just in the lab and. Uh, Unfortunately, they don't show here on the bottom right when you uh, when you right click uh, to uh, to tell you who they are. So I've forgotten their names. Isn't that pretty? All right. So once we uh, get in here, I will pause the recording, and we uh, I'll see you guys back on the map. And grab and. And we're back. All right, so let's uh, let's have a look here. Uh, as you can tell, it's, uh, it's quite a, a large number of parts. Um, <clears throat> we're looking at uh, almost 800 parts, and uh, I'm actually amazed with uh, with how uh, how well this runs. Uh, we're uh, we're just shy of 770 tons. Uh, this is fully laden with fuel for the most part. Uh, we're missing some uh, some mono propellant, but uh, I've got 13,000 units. So I don't I don't think that's going to be an issue. Uh, but that's uh, that's a fair amount of fuel, uh, if you ask me. So um, it's uh, it's definitely the largest ship that I have ever built, um, and it's like it's likely. The largest thing that I've ever built in, in orbit around Kerbin. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set up this uh, maneuver. Now I've lined the planets up uh, using ksp.olex.biz. Uh, really, really invaluable resource to have. Um, I, I don't really know that I, that I'd be able to to do any of these. Uh, missions without it. Um, Alright, so let's uh, go ahead and set Jewel as our target here, um, just to, to make sure. So yeah, we are kind of, let's say, uh, 
not optimal. I'm gonna set up set up a whole mission plan here, uh, <clears throat> and then if I'm uh, if I'm able to execute it, then that's fine. If not, uh, I'll uh, I'll have to improvise along the way. So I just want to make sure that these nodes all kind of meet here. to do a little bit of a burn. Okay, so <clears throat> we're more or less on the mark. I, I guess I could have uh, flown the mission a little bit earlier. Uh, normally uh, you're supposed to have Kerbin, the Sun, and Jewel at about 98 degrees from each other, but I kind of over overshot it. So, uh, you know, it, I'll, I'll have to correct for that. But um, I'm actually pretty confident I've uh, I've got the fuel to to do this. Um, needless to say, uh, all of these tanks can uh, can be discarded. Um, as for the order in which I, I discard them, I'm, I really want to get rid of these front two tanks uh, quickly. I'm not sure whether they'll be the first thing, the first ones that I get rid of, but uh, I generally want to keep the uh, center of mass as far back as I can. Um, I want the pressure from uh, from these engines to kind of stay on uh, on this uh, line here uh, that's uh, that's created by the frame, and I want this line to kind of tug the center of mass. So I want the center of mass to be behind this line so that we're pulling rather than pushing. Um, it makes for, uh, for a much more stable setup if you're, if you're doing that. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, kind of try and see. Alright, so we've got 17 minutes to burn time. It's going to be prograde here, so retrograde here. Um, so if I just point really sure which way. Um, it's really, it's kind of slow to move and it flops around a little bit when, uh, when you, uh, when you try to move it due to its enormous bulk. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, you can tell it's, it's about a 2,000 meter per second burn. Um, so it's, it's probably going to it's going to take several orbits to do, I'm, I'm pretty certain, so what I'll do is I'll do maybe one burn with you guys here, and then uh, I'll, I'll do the rest uh, off camera, and if anything does happen to, uh, <coughs> if anything does happen to, uh, to go, uh, severely wrong or if there's any kind of explosions or anything like that I'll, uh, I'll bring you guys uh, back in on it. Now of course I have turned the ship in the wrong direction but since we've got the momentum we might as well carry it and uh, we'll just uh, let it pass through. You can see these uh, these docking ports, the large ones, are a lot stiffer than the uh, than the Clampatron Juniors, uh, than the than the regular uh, Clampatrons, um, but they do. Uh, there is a little bit of of uh, give to them, so uh, you can build larger structures and and keep them stiff. But um, there's a limit to uh, to that stiffness as well. So, but I really like them because it allows you to to build big things. Uh, As we're, we're spinning here, I also wanted to show you some of uh, some of the issues that I've had with uh, with building this. Now, if you uh, look down here, you'll see that these probes kind of clip into each other, and uh, it's uh, it's rather 
it wasn't straightforward docking them on here because I had to, um, you know, dock, docking one of them is is not really a, it's a non-issue. Um, but when you bring the second one in and it's at a uh, <coughs> so basically at a 90 degree angle to the other one and they kind of don't match um, what I did was I, uh, I came in at an angle with the delivery vehicle and, uh, and stopped the ship I stopped the, uh, the, sh the probe delivery vehicle and then when I hit the decouple uh, the decoupler that actually has a little bit of a kick to it so it kicked it straight into the uh, into the docking port and then it kind of wobbled itself into place uh, so that's how I uh, got those on there, but uh, incidentally, that docking wobble is what also caused this clipping to happen here. So uh, I'm not sure how uh, how we'll be able to uh, to handle the, uh, the decoupling of this thing. I haven't really tested it out, and I I will be very very disappointed if it explodes. All right, so we're, uh, we're almost here. So I'm going to do a little bit of a cheating move here, and uh, we'll uh, we'll fast forward to uh, to, the, to the burn. All right, and we're back. I've uh, time accelerated to uh, to the point of the burn. Uh, problem is, like I said, it's it's going to be a really long burn. Um, I've made sure that all of the non-necessary engines have been turned off. Uh, I've only got these uh, nuclear engines on right now. Let's go ahead and turn on the lights. Uh, not that it makes much difference, but uh, at least you can see some of the ship. Um, as it happens, everything important I do in these videos turns out to be at night, so this time I, I tried to <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I tried to uh, remember to uh, to put some lights on here, so I'm gonna turn on the uh, SAS, and uh, we're gonna give it a little bit more time here, uh, 20, uh, 20 more in-game seconds before I start the burn, and it's going to be a six-minute burn. Um, <coughs> I'm going to burn three minutes on one side of the of the maneuver node, and three minutes on the other. What's that? There's something over there. There are a lot of parts uh, currently in orbit from uh, the various... Yeah, so there are various parts in orbit from the dozens of... Uh, well, dozens. Maybe a dozen or so. Uh, probably a lot more than a dozen launches that I've done, uh, you know, bringing everything up here. Um, and that's Forager. Um, I've also uh, did a little bit of uh, science mining um, around Kerbin. I, uh, I built a plane and I uh, flew around gathering all, all kinds of uh, science from uh, from the various biomes, uh, so I could uh, get the. Uh, I already had a lab, but I wanted to research the uh, rapier engine, uh, so I've uh, I've got that done. Um, I'm not entirely sure how much uh, how much science I've got right now. Probably around 300 or so. Um, but I uh, I decided against uh, introducing yet more parts on here uh, for for this mission. So we're uh, we're able to start the uh, burn now. Those can get a little bit loud. So we'll burn three uh, three minutes on one side and, uh, and three on the other. Um, I've got all eight engines active, I think. Um, and we are currently burning. We're, uh, going to jewel, guys. We're going to jewel. Um, I I'm hoping to leave this up there and then. Um, or at least, you know, leave the frame and the lab up there, and I'll, uh, I'll probably use one of these, uh,
drive stage is to uh, uh, to bring the the guys back and to uh, and to bring back like experiments and whatnot from uh, from uh, from there. Um, although I'm, I might actually have to bring both landers uh, if I'm uh, if I'm going to bring uh, the uh, the surface samples back. I might have to, to bring both landers back. We'll, uh, we'll see about that. I, I might not be able to. Let's not blow up our engines. I might not be able to uh, to store all of the samples. So I figured uh, bringing the, uh, the lab uh, uh, the lab along will probably be a, a good idea. Um, I just uh, I just wanted to go to Jewel, um, and I and I wanted to, uh, to do a video on it, but I, I just didn't want it to be one of those let's go to Tylo videos, or let's go to Val videos, or I, I wanted to include everything in, in this one series, so hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to do all of those things. And uh, yeah, I've just noticed it's uh, it's a it's not really sure it's uh, it's around an hour long burn. Um, so uh, I'll uh, pause the recording here and I'll I'll get back to you guys when uh, either when we're done with the burn or when something interesting happens because this is going to be long. So uh, I'll see you guys when I'll see you guys. Alright, so we're uh, about two-thirds of the way through this uh, burn. Uh, we have shed a little bit of weight at the front. We've gone ahead and uh, got rid of the two tanks that were um, hugging the, uh, the large lander here. Um, so uh, that, that probably gave us about 90 some tons of uh, weight savings. Uh, if you take a look up at the uh, liquid fuel here, um, we're actually uh, missing another full tank of fuel. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll be shedding that uh, fairly soon here. Um, I've uh, Got ahead. I've gone ahead and uh, actually deleted the, uh, the maneuver node. I've uh, traveled a significant distance away from it, so uh, the um, the angles on the uh, on the nav ball were all messed up, uh, and I it it really didn't make any any more sense. Um, more or less uh, burning in the uh, direction of my escape. You can see the uh, my trajectory is curved with respect to uh, to Kerbin and that's what the prograde marker is showing me it's showing me I'm traveling in that direction um, but in fact my uh, escape vector is along this line here which is why I'm burning a little bit to the left of my uh, of the prograde marker so with that thank you uh, so much for watching hopefully uh, next time we'll uh, be a lot closer to uh, to Jewel and uh, we'll be able to get to the really, really fun stuff. So go ahead and drop a like uh, and or a comment, and uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more of uh, my uh, my content. Have a great one, and I'll see you next time.